Hi, David Wallman here. Welcome to a new episode of Ask Wallman, the show in which you ask me questions and I answer them. <laughs> Once a week I do that, I gather some of the questions that I received in the previous week and some leftovers questions and sometimes I even make up questions because uh, I need more content. No, I don't. I actually, anyways, today I'm gonna answer a few of these questions and uh, hopefully you find them interesting, beneficial, and uh, let's get started. The first question is from Filippos Papas, and he's asking me, when I write a song, do I start with a chord progression or the melody? That's a great question. I've asked that to many players also, and it really depends on uh, the intent of the song, what I'm writing for, because if I'm writing for, let's say, um, uh, a video, so there's a, an advertisement, for example. The ad has been shot already, and there's some footage of um, a snowboarder, for example, and there's some shots like that, and I've got to put music to it. In that case, what I would start by doing is um, not start with the chords nor the melodic section, but with the rhythm, because the video is shot already, and let's say that there's a shot where the snowboard is going this way, and then bam, he's going this way, and then another cut, he's going this way. What I would do is import that video in my sequencer and put markers whenever there's something interesting happening or if there's a rhythm type of element. So I start with the rhythm, if that's the intent. And, um, and then it kind of depends um, on what's going on in the video. That's for video, that's just an example. But if I'm writing for uh, just myself, um, most of the time, nowadays, it starts with the melodic idea because most of the time um, when I write something, I write it without my guitar. I started doing that uh, a few years ago, maybe six, seven years ago, and, and ever since I feel that my writing has uh, been closer to who I am. Before that, I would always have my guitar and start riffing and things like that, and it was really predictable. Um, you would hear that, well, a lot of the songs that I would wrote would gravitate towards that open E. Um, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? And, and so it was very predictable, very guitar-like, and, um, and I felt that that was limiting my, my writing. So uh, Evolving Seeds of Glory is a good example, which is my latest album. Most of that was written uh, taking walks or lying down in bed before I go to bed or before I go to sleep just imagining themes and imagining how it would sound like. I didn't really know if it was practical to play those things on the guitar, but that's how it was written, and I'm really happy with the result. So most of the time with the theme, um, if you're not doing it that way, I would strongly recommend you do that. Just put your guitar down. It'll force yourself to not think like a guitar player, but rather think like a musician and um, imagine composing your head before applying it to your instrument. A lot of players forget that the guitar is a tool. And I say that all the time. It's not the pencil that tells the story, but it's the author. It's not the guitar that tells the good song, but it's you, the, the author, the musician. So uh, that's my answer. I hope that helped and that it, that it inspired you to try something new maybe. Next question is from um, Freddie George Anthony, and he is asking me about uh, picks, what kind of picks I use, and how I hold them. So there are many options as far as pick goes and as far as how to hold it. And, and I remember when I started uh, playing and getting, again, my phone. Oops, that's my sister. Um, I'm not going to answer if you're watching right now. I'll answer it later. <laughs> Getting texts from Australia, isn't that cool when you're in the States? Okay, back to our topic. Uh, let me find a pick here, or right here. I use V-Picks. I've been using those V-Picks for the last six years or so, and um, I tried many different V-Picks. Now I use the Dimension. So this is a V-Pick. It's a wider pick. Um, as you can see, it's not very thin, and it's a really strong pick. It might seem uncomfortable. It seemed kind of uncomfortable for me first, but I can't play without them anymore. I love these picks. Um, they have kind of a an angle here, so the point is pretty pointy, which is good because it slips off the strings, and I just love those picks. You should try one, but I'm not saying that that is the best pick in the world. For me, it is. 
but that doesn't mean that it will be for you. So try a lot of different ones. And as far as the, the playing with the pick thing, um, let's see if I can find a, a prop here. I see one, right? Well, actually, I've got the perfect prop. I'll be right back. Okay. Here's my prop. <laughs> the shred neck. Um, the shred neck. <laughs> so I've got my pick. i got my string. Let me refocus here so that it's... There you go. So... When I'm attacking the string, I don't have my pick parallel to the actual string. I have it angled a little bit. It's not completely angled, but just slightly angled so that there's less resistance. If it was completely angled, well, that would be harder for me to jump from string to string because um, because when you're, you're playing a string, you're going outside of it, I would have to really lift my pick and go to the next one. Whereas if I, it's angled at 45 angle degree, I play that and it's already in position for the next one. Um, whereas the other movement, if it was completely uh, vertical, I would have to go up and above and play it. It's micro movements. It, it doesn't, um, you can't really see it when you play, but it has a lot to do with speed and um, not that speed is the answer, but sometimes you want to play fast if you need to, and clarity also, and precision. So that's how I, I uh, angle my pick, so kind of at a 45 angle degree like this. I know it's black, it's kind of hard to see. But the way I hold it is between my thumb and my index. My index is kind of bent like this, and see that joint? The pick, the pointy part of the pick is kind of an extension of that joint, and then my thumb goes on top. And then something that I changed, I actually talked about the change maybe four years ago on my YouTube channel. And what I've been doing um, lately is opening my, my three fingers a little bit more, a little, little looser. Before that, if you watch the earlier videos, I had this closed fist thing, and that created problems. I, I don't know how I play like that anymore. But I kind of trained myself to open up a little bit. I made a video on this, on uh, what I did to train myself, and it worked really well. So I will link at the end of this video. You will see an annotation. You can click on it, and you will see what I'm talking about. It has to do with a pick and a pencil. But that's what I use, and I hope that answered your question. And then the, the last question is from Alex. And uh, this is what Alex is asking me. Um, every time someone asks me to play something, I never know what to play. Basically, that's his question. Um, so, yeah, that's a great question. Being put on the spot, having to play something, what do you play? Do you play a piece of a, a solo that you're learning? You could, but it's going to be out of context, and people are going to be nice and say, that sounds great, where really they're thinking, what is that? It's out of context. Um, or do you just play chords and then your musicality doesn't really come out if you're just strumming chords? So what I would really do is when you grab your instrument, when you put on the spot to play something, don't play anything for the first few seconds and kind of get in the zone. Um, breathe in and out and think of a chord that has open strings. That's just my tip, that's what I do. That, that's not the absolute, you've gotta do this, but that's what I do. Think of a, an interesting open chord. You don't need to know the name of the chord, it doesn't matter, but something that you know will work and inspire you. Play that chord, listen to it, and imagine as you're hearing what's being played, some of the notes that are around that chord that would work and complement that and sound interesting. So yes, it's all about improv, but that's what I would do. I think it um, not only uh, has the potential of sounding much better than if you played a song that you already knew, but it also, being put on the spot, having to play in front of someone, puts you in a situation that is really valuable to improve your comfort as a musician who's trying to express himself with that piece of wood, the guitar. Uh, being put on the spot like that really helps. Um, 
If you want to go further, I would, I would really recommend that there's a couple of videos that I did. One is um, about uh, magic chord shapes. It's a short video, but just kind of showing you some chords that kind of work all the time, and those are good starting points. I will link that in the description of this video. And uh, there is also one of the masterclass sessions that I did on uh, basically playing without a backing track. I will also list that in the description of the video. And I think that's beneficial also. Watch these videos. I think that'll give you some ideas. Great questions today, today guys. I'm gonna try to limit this to three questions a week. I realized that last week there were a lot of questions, a lot of un unanswered ones. And um, I'm just gonna kind of try to pick three and next week I'll pick three more. If you have new questions, leave them below this video and I will um, maybe answer it in the next episode. Thank you so much. Stay tuned this Friday uh, is Wildcard Day where I upload a new video that does not fit the Q and A's and the masterclass sessions. The masterclass sessions are on Monday, Q and A's on Wednesdays and Friday you have that wildcard video. This week um, we're gonna talk about tracking um, rhythm guitars and uh, I'll basically share with you where I'm at with uh, the Deep Inside the Mind project, which is coming soon. Thank you for watching this. Watch more videos. I love it. <laughs> See you next time. Salut.